Welcome to the 2022 Wildlife Hazard Management and Strike Reporting Update, part of the FAA Airports video series. At the end of this video, we hope that you understand how the FAA reduces the hazard of wildlife strikes at airports through strike reporting and effective wildlife hazard management plans. Aircraft and wildlife often share the same airspace and ground space. Through the FAA's Wildlife Hazard Management Program, the agency has worked to address wildlife strikes at airports and show the many benefits of strike reporting. This is the foundation for understanding wildlife hazards on a national level and at individual airports to increase safety. Strike data allows engine and aircraft manufacturers to design aircraft parts that can better withstand impacts from wildlife. Airports use strike data to identify and eliminate habitats that attract wildlife seeking food, water, or shelter. Airport operators and biologists rely on information from strike reports to better understand hazardous species and what factors may attract them to certain areas, as well as the dynamics of a strike, such as location, time, and season, and to evaluate the effectiveness of their wildlife management program. FA biologists work to address wildlife hazards in many ways, through regulatory guidance, data collection, research, partnerships, and outreach. The FA has been collecting strike data for 60 years, but the systematic method goes back to 1990 with the creation of the FAA's National Wildlife Strike Database. Since that time, we've documented more than 250,000 strikes to form the database. Managed by the U.S. Department of Agriculture for the FAA, it provides information about each strike to identify what type of aircraft and species were involved, the time of day and phase of flight when the strike occurred, where the strike occurred, and whether it occurred in or out of the airport's environment. The database also helps us understand how the strike occurred by connecting possible attractants on or near the airport and the season during which it occurred. So, who can report wildlife strikes? Anyone who has either witnessed an incident or found evidence of a strike. Overall, more than 2,000 airports in the U.S. have reported strikes since 1990. So this past Halloween, I was with a relatively new student pilot I had met up with that day. We decided we were just going to do one circuit around the pattern here at Bay Bridge Airport. Got about 300 feet off of the departure end of runway 29 here, and to the, to the left side of my eye, the corner of my eye, I saw three large birds come across the front of the aircraft. The trailing bird, which I found out now is uh, called a cormorant, made a hard right and immediately entered into the aircraft, busted through the plexiglass uh, windshield of the Cessna 172 that we were flying, hit me in the face, and then made its way into the back of the aircraft with my headsets. I realized at that point, wow, the plane is still flying. Had a lot of drag, needed a lot of power, but we were still flying. We were about 300, 400 feet. On final, actually, I had to apply full power just to get it back to the runway. We had about a 10 knot headwind that day. Without a windshield, we had a lot of drag. Fortunately, we had enough power to get back to the runway, landed safely, and then exited at that point. I've been flying small airplanes for, for 24 years and instructing for 12 years. And uh, the majority of my time, which is around 4,000 hours, is instruction in small airplanes. And I, I've never had really a close encounter with a, with a bird with all that time. Typically, the, the birds will either dive under you, avoid, avoid you. In this case, I think that it's just such a low level with the wetlands being so close to the departure end of runway 29. And they were, they were just taking off as well, right? I'm in their habitat. It was really no avoiding the bird. This was by far the, the scariest situation. But now, you know, I definitely look at the environment around an airport. I incorporate a scan for wildlife prior to taking off. Not only am I looking for aircraft, but I'm looking for birds, I'm looking for deer, anything that could impact our, our takeoff. To ensure the FAA receives as many reports as possible, we've conducted outreach efforts to educate the aviation industry about the value in reporting. The simplest way to report a strike is online at wildlife.faa.gov. A new software platform was created and deployed for the strike database in 2019. 
The purpose of the new platform was to make it even easier to enter strike data or search the database for strikes. Additionally, the old database often had a delay of months between the time a strike report was submitted and the time it could be viewed online. The new platform allows the data to be publicly available within two to three days from the time the strike report is submitted. We also publish an annual FAA USDA strike report and send our experts to conferences, workshops, and air shows. We've learned from the National Wildlife Strike Database that the better we understand these risks, the better we can reduce the threat and improve safety. For years, we've worked with several industry partners. For instance, we provide financial support to the Smithsonian Institution to identify bird remains from civil aviation bird strikes. The service is free of charge to any U.S. registered aircraft, regardless of where the strike occurred, and to any U.S. civilian airport that experiences a strike. The strike reporting and feather identification programs help us track national trends and determine hazard levels. They also provide a scientific foundation for guidance aimed at reducing wildlife strikes. The regulatory guidance in 14 CFR Part 139.337 details an airport's obligation of when and how to conduct a wildlife hazard assessment and create a wildlife hazard management plan. Equally important is Advisory Circular 150 5200-32, Reporting Wildlife Aircraft Strikes, which clarifies strike reporting procedures for the aviation industry, and Advisory Circular 150-5200-38, Protocol for the Conduct and Review of Wildlife Hazard Site Visits, Wildlife Hazard Assessments, and Wildlife Hazard Management Plans. These documents provide the blueprint for reducing damaging strikes within the airport environment. Additional guidance can be found on the FAA Wildlife website. The website has been updated to provide the most recent guidance, resources, and training information. A Hot Topics box on the first page is updated regularly for the latest publications. The FAA also partners with the Bird Strike Committee USA, interacting with more than 20 representatives from the aviation industry, improving communication and sharing of FAA guidance and research efforts. So what have we learned from wildlife strike reporting? We know that birds are involved in 97% of the reported strikes. Terrestrial mammals, such as deer and coyotes, comprise about 2%, and the remainder consists of bats and reptiles. While land mammal strikes are much less frequent than bird strikes, they are far more likely to cause damage. Deer strikes occur more frequently at general aviation airports because many of these airports do not have adequate fencing. The FAA provides grants to help airports acquire appropriate wildlife fences. We also know that over half of all bird strikes occur between July and October because of fall migration and young, inexperienced birds being struck. Likewise, a third of deer strikes occur in October and November because of increased movement surrounding the rut and seasonal food availability. We now know that mammals are more likely to be struck at night, whereas birds are struck more often during the day. Both birds and mammals are more likely to be struck during quieter approaches and landings compared to louder takeoffs and ascents. Data shows that catastrophic events are most likely to occur during takeoffs. There are more people and more aircraft flying than ever before. And due to conservation efforts, many species of birds and mammals have increasing populations for the first time in decades. From 1990 to 2021, there have been over 600 species of birds 50 species of land mammals, almost 40 species of bats, and over 20 species of reptiles involved in civil U.S. aircraft strikes. The groups of birds with the most damaging strikes are waterfowl, gulls, raptors, and flocking birds such as starlings and blackbirds. Deer species and coyotes are the land mammals with the most damaging strikes. As expected, strike data shows that the larger and heavier an animal, the more likely it will cause damage. Similarly, smaller size birds that flock together, such as European starlings and blackbirds, pose as great a threat to aircraft as larger individual birds. Damaging strikes below 500 feet within the airport environment have dropped during the last decade, even though the number of reported strikes has steadily climbed. It is evident that the increase in wildlife programs has led to this reduction of hazards and improved safety. And now, more than ever, 
airports are taking an active role to better understand their wildlife hazards and how they fluctuate throughout the year due to migratory patterns. So where does that leave us? The National Wildlife Strike Database shows us that we have to continue targeting research efforts to improve our understanding of specific hazardous species and to improve mitigation techniques for those species. We will also continue researching detection and monitoring technologies, like using drones, for example, and modifying habitats to make them less attractive to certain species on and around airports. Strike data helps us evaluate management strategies and how wildlife programs are able to reduce or eliminate damaging strikes. We've come a long way in understanding the risks that certain wildlife pose to aircraft thanks to the wealth of strike report data from airports, airlines, pilots, biologists, and air traffic controllers. The data combined with advancements in technology and research findings will move the needle on airport safety. Even though wildlife and aircraft share the same airspace, we now know enough to change what can be a conflicting existence to one of safer coexistence. Safety for the flying public is our number one priority. The wildlife hazard management programs at our nation's airports have consistently and reliably mitigated that risk for humans and wildlife alike.